Hey. Hi, I am just trying to make sure I have all the right stuff shared here today. I have my, um, everything's backwards to how it usually is, so this is kind of interesting. Let's see, am I sharing the right screen? All right, perfect. And let's see if I can get Adam over there. All right, cool. So, hi guys. I am going to be streaming something a little different today. Usually, I do... Um, Code Wars, a lot of Code Wars, but today I'm actually doing some work on a project. So um, I'm part of a boot camp that's going on right now. We are heading into the tail end of our boot camp right now, and um, I don't, let me make myself big. <laughs> We're heading into the tail end of the boot camp right now, and I have to do what's called our 100 hours project, which is basically our final project for the boot camp. It is due on, well, an MVP, like a, a product, a beautiful MVP, is due on May 15th. Is that right? No, that's not right. That can't be right. June 15th. June 1st. I don't know. It's due in about not that long. And we're supposed to spend 100 hours on it, and I've spent about two hours. <laughs> so I have a lot of work to do, and I actually just changed my project yesterday. So I'm going to be working on it a bit today. I'm not sure what exactly I'm going to do yet, but I figured I'll hang out on stream. Anyone wants to chat, I'm willing to chat. If anyone wants to talk me into doing a Code Wars, I probably won't say no. So here we go. Basically, my app idea my new app idea <laughs> is to have a website where, um, well, the ultimate goal would be teachers could sign up for like a classroom account and uh, students would also sign up and they would get attached to their teacher's classroom and it would almost be a place to track like reading, like so say over summer break or reading for the semester, right, for small kids or for kids I'd say anywhere up through middle school. Uh, so the teacher maybe would have like a class bookshelf of books that they suggest reading or books that they read in class and the kids could on their own, it's kind of a social media thing, they could, you know, add the books that they've read to their feed, they could add any drawings they've made, any projects they've done, any art, um, any book reports that they've written, any thoughts that they have about the books that they read to like a book social feed for their classroom. And they could also add any books that they read outside of class to this feed. And maybe their friends would get book suggestions. And the idea is basically to share reading amongst kids in a social media format so that, you know, kids will get encouraged to read more. I happen to be a pretty big bookworm. So, yeah, that's what the idea is. Um, right now, it does nothing. <laughs> I haven't built anything. I'm starting here. Let me switch over to my um, mini me. So I'm starting with some code that are in our boot camp. We're working on um, group projects right now to make social media um, applications. And so this is my group's social media app, which is kind of an Instagram slash Reddit clone. And I started with that as a as a template almost and I'm completely changing it and making it my own kind of for you know this project my project I'm calling it read along for now I don't love that name uh, I don't hate that name but it's not I don't know I, I feel like that name's not quite there yet but anyway so here we are um, so this is a bunch of code that before I started messing with it earlier today <laughs> Uh, would have worked as an Instagram type clone. It's set up um, in an NVC, MVC format, a model view controller format, and um, I'm still getting the hang of MVC. Working through this, I'm hoping it's going to cement my understanding of the folders and the files and how they all interact and what does what. Um, but yeah, so I started messing with it today. I've really only been in the views folder, which is essentially the um, there are .ejs files, which is like, um, how can I put it? They're like the HTML files. These are going to render as HTML to get sent back to the client. It's just a templating language that lets you put in things like this so that you can kind of have JavaScript inside an HTML file, which is very helpful. 
so uh, as you can see, what I've done is I've just kind of put in comments that describe what I want certain areas of the views to do. I haven't even begun to to mark like you know write the markdown of the HTML. It's just divs right now. Um, anywhere where there was existing code that I could use to get the general gist of the thing, I've I've moved that code into that section. But in general, <laughs> I have not done anything. So this is fun. <laughs> and uh, so here, these are. So profile.ejs was an existing file from my group's um, Instagram clone. And I'm kind of changing into a dashboard view. Uh, what I envision happening is when somebody signs into the app, uh, they're going to, when they're, as soon as they log in, they're going to see their dashboard. I want it to be um, a nice big hot welcome, whoever, whatever your name is. Um, Remember, this is aimed for children, so you want it to be very welcoming, very inviting. So welcome, Bob. And then I want to have a nice visual nav bar, because um, again, these children could be younger. They are going to be sit signing up with a parent's email, and the parents will be getting email notifications down the line <laughs> once they figure out how of everything that's happening in the feed. So it is very protected. Um, I do have small kids, so I, I do think about that sort of thing. But anyway, they're going to have a visual nav bar with links to be able to add a post, to be able to get to their classroom page, their friends' pages, their messages, and the parental settings. Um, as you can see, I haven't coded out the nav bar at all, but I've saved the spot. Then beneath that horizontal nav bar, I want to have a little section where it could be a message from their teacher, right? So I was hoping that the teachers would you know, record video messages for the students. So I was I'm imagining an embedded video, maybe an embedded, um, you know, YouTube video where the teacher's just speaking very briefly to the kids, maybe introducing the the books for the week or the, you know, the books for the, the unit that they're in, right? A very friendly thing. So um, I have a little note, as I've been doing this, um, like kind of pseudo coding, I've been putting little notes to myself. Like I'm wondering if I should be able to minimize the teacher section just in case the teacher doesn't update very often, like maybe it's only maximized if the student hasn't seen it before. <laughs> That's funny, Nick. I don't think I ever have met a kid named Bob. Bobby, I've met Bobbies, but never a Bob. And Robbies, Robbies and Bobbies. Never a, a small child Rob, and definitely never a small child Bob. But whatever, there's little Bob in our class. <laughs> so anyway, I was thinking um, I'd want the teacher section to maybe be able to be minimized. Um, maybe it'll automatically minimize after viewing once. I don't know. That part I'm still unsure about because if you are dealing with small kids, if it's minimized after the first view, maybe they wanted to watch it again. So maybe it just becomes smaller. I don't know. Um, anyway, so then I want to have, but beneath that, I want to have uh, just the, like your latest three posts, right? A nice little like horizontal feed of your latest three posts. And um, I want to have, at the end of that row, a card that's styled in the same way as those posts, but with a big plus button so that you know the kids can see to add a new post. I know they were able to add a new post at the top of the page, but I want them to be able to add one down there. Hey, Divaker. <laughs> yeah, Bobby. I wonder when Bobbies become Bobs. Like, what age does that happen? Is it a coming of age thing? Like, is it like one day their dad sits them down and they're like, son, it's time. Here is <laughs> little Bobby. You know, you've had a full childhood, but it's time, son. You've got to become a Bob. You're ready. Like, I mean, I wonder how that happens. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway, so they're going to have their post, another chance to add a feed. Uh, so that is coded out a little because our Instagram clone did have uh, a post feed. I don't have anything as far as limiting to only three yet. I will add that later. I'm not even worried about that right now. And then um, I want to have a large visual arrow that will take the child to all of their posts, all of their own posts, right? Their own personal feed. Again, everything in this app I want to make very visual. I want it to be very intuitive. Um, <laughs> after their first breakup, they become a Bob. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe that's what the girlfriend say. say. They're like, I can't date a Bobby. I don't know why they have to have a southern accent, but I can't date a Bobby. Only a Bob. I want a man. I don't know. 
Anyway, so after the section with their posts, I want to have like a nice vertical feed of their friends' latest posts. Again, I don't want to have all the friends' latest posts, maybe, you know, a nice number, but I want it to be on one side. I want the book that their post is related to, and then next to it, whatever they uploaded. So if they uploaded a picture of their project, if they uploaded, you know, a little book report, um, if they uploaded, you know, a thought. Uh, something so that you know the kids are seeing the book and they're seeing uh, what their friends did. So that's next. And then <laughs> here's a little comment. Um, remember, this code is copied from my group. Uh, I've been in a group with three other people working on an Instagram clone right now for our boot camp. So <laughs> this little bit of code, I just have. What is all this? <laughs> comment because I I can see that it's it's for for errors, but. Uh, I don't remember what this was attached to. <laughs> like it says, if locals.messages.errors alert danger and the message. So I don't, I guess I still need a way to have errors log, so I'm keeping it in there for now. And then I'm just linking to my JavaScript pages. And you'll see here at the very top, oh wait, oops, I deleted it. Give me a second here. I deleted it. Or did I? Do I have it? Nope, I deleted it. I want to include partials header. So in EJS, you can um, kind of have partial pages, like components that you don't want to copy over and over and over. Like you don't want to keep repeating yourself. So you can just include partials header. So it's going to be the same header on every page. And then I've got partials footer at the bottom too. And my current thought is that the header is basically going to be, you know, like a pretty logo, um, a quick a quick link to your the user's dashboard, maybe on the left, and then on the right a hamburger menu with the same things that are in this nav bar here, right? Uh, nothing too special. But anyway, so that's my profile page right now, or the dashboard view as I'm thinking of it. I haven't actually written any HTML other than the comments, so. What I was doing earlier today was I was actually trying to see if I have it. No, I have a notebook. I was trying to think of all the different views I was going to need. Like I was trying to walk through the user process and it added up to a whole lot of different views, which makes me a little nervous if I'm being honest, because I'm not sure if I can get this done in time. I might not be able to get a classroom group teacher um, type functionality in time. Definitely, probably not that. Definitely, probably. Definitely not the teacher classroom thing by the time the MVC is due. Maybe by the time the final project's due, which is about, I think that's due two weeks after the MVC. Because uh, I do think that the classroom is a valuable part of this whole thing, but we'll see. So if you're just tuning in now, I am just getting started, like as in today, I worked on this for half an hour, on a project, a full stack project to make a social media classroom reading and uh, associated works app. So I'm calling it Read Along. I have no idea if that name is taken by any other apps. I haven't checked yet. Please do not take it because <laughs> I don't want to have to think of a new name. Uh, but anyway, so people are going to log in. They're going to get to this profile page. I did have a sign up page. Now this is where it gets interesting. So, okay, imagine, imagine that I do have the full project working, right? It's, there's going to be different information that a teacher signing up is going to need to provide me or I'm going to need to, maybe I can have one sign up but have a radio blast. Basically I need to distinguish between if somebody's signing up as a teacher or if somebody's signing up as a child, right? Because if somebody's signing up in t as a teacher, in their dashboard view, you know, they're going to see stuff like all the kids in their classroom. They're going to see an option to add books to the classroom bookshelf. Like it's just going to be a different experience, right? So. I was thinking earlier today that I was going to have to make a sign up page, a different sign up page for children versus teachers. But now I'm wondering if I can just do a kind of a generic sign up and then they indicate on the sign up page which role they have and then later I can add the settings. I'm truly not sure what's better. Um, I'm just going to write a note to myself. I think tonight is mostly going to be talking <laughs> about where I am and trying to figure stuff out. So if any of you have thoughts about this, please let me know. And if any of you want to see a Code Wars, please let me know. 
Um, okay, so I'm going to put a note here saying um, maybe combine sign up pages into a generic single one with radio button selection to enable additional fields. That actually make, might make more sense. I don't know if that's going to be easier or harder for me in the long run. Yeah, right? Like a radio button on the sign up, right? Like so you're clicking sign up and then you're saying whether you're a teacher or a child and then that's determining which divs are showing. So it's kind of like having two views but on one page because you're just going to hide whatever isn't relevant. Yeah, I kind of like that, but then also it might just be easier to keep them separate, right? In the scheme of things, I don't think it's going to matter. Not on the front end, right? I mean, does it really matter if it's two HTML pages? Probably not. What matters is when it gets to the database, how I'm distinguishing, which I haven't figured out yet. Yeah, it'll store their de a democracy. The classroom gets to vote for the teacher and they get all the privileges. That's actually kind of funny. Um, yeah, so I need to have some sort of, I need to read up on the databases some more and see about the best way to, like when, when to split it and how to store the different data, right? Like, am I going to store the teacher in a completely different collection? Is it going to be just different information in their document? You know, so there's, um, I have a lot of thinking to do, which I won't do that on stream because it's probably just going to be a lot of me just sitting there going, hmm. Hmm. But you guys don't want to watch, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so anyway, so th right now I'm thinking this is the information I'm going to need if somebody's signing up as a child. I don't know that I'm going to put all this, like, boom, right, when you're first signing up. Maybe you sign up for the account and then you add this to kind of complete your, your registration. But then at the same time, just get it done, right? So I'm thinking I'm going to need to have a username. I parent's first name or guardian, parent or guardian's first name, a parent or guardian's last name because this is going to be geared towards children. I don't want to get in trouble with anything as far as doing things with children. Um, so I figure it's actually the parent or guardian signing up and then they're going to be letting their child use it. So parent or guardian's first name, parent or guardian's last name, an email, password, confirm the password, and then just the first name of the child. I am going to need to be able to later add, like what if the same parent has two kids, right, at the same school, um, add additional students, right, and then I already had a note in here about including an input area for joining a class group, like do I want to do that here? Maybe you sign up for little Bob and then once you're on the dashboard in the parent setting menu, you go and there's an input field to enter like a group, a class group you know, code, right, to join the class group. So I don't think I need to put the class group right here on the sign up. I do think that's a little bit overwhelming. Having said that, though, I do know that, you know, parents are busy and sometimes it is nice to just get all the stuff done right away, right? Like maybe the teacher sends you an email, you know, and they say, oh, sign up for this and uh, here's our class group number. You know, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> a whole lot of times it's just going to be like, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so I, I started coding this out with the thought that I would have the teacher account as a separate view. So I did have a button at the bottom, you know, do you need to sign up as a teacher? Like, oh, are you on the wrong page? You know, and that, that would link you to the teacher sign up page. Oh, you already have an account. Log in. That'll take you to that one. Again, I have the partial header and partial footer on here too. So that's this view. And then my teacher sign up page right now is basically the same thing. It's first name, last name, email, password, confirm password, and then I have a spot for them to enter their classroom's name. So, you know, like Ms. Salvador's room or something, or um, room three, you know. Uh, and then I, I do actually have a note in here. I'm like, should I include a school input here to help keep unique classrooms, right? Like how many room threes are there? You know, assuming, assuming more than just me in my imaginary classroom ever use this app. How many, you know, you have to have a way, you know, like, you, you have to have a way to keep it more unique, right? Like, you are you can't only have one room three in the whole of America. So, that's something to think about. And then, um, up here I did have a thought, and this is going back to the two forms, one form, how to control, how to separate them I have. Do I want to use the same, like, names for the information 
as far as the da database is concerned. Are the pros are the cons that? So like right now I have first name teacher and last name teacher, whereas on the student one I have first name parent, last name parent. So I don't know. Thoughts? Anybody? I really don't know. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's that. And you see this this EJS form barely has any EJS. Like you'll see there's little bits here. Anytime you see these percents and the carrots or the squigglies, that's EJS, but mostly it's the form. <laughs> like most of this reads as HTML. So, yeah. Okay, so anyway, so they're going to sign up or they're going to log in. The login page, I really haven't done much to it at all. Like I said, I was just working on this for half an hour earlier. I, I put a few hours into a, um, sorry, I'm just going to put my hair up. I put a few hours into a different 100 hours project earlier um, in April, but after we started working with MVC and our social media product projects in the boot camp, um, this idea has been in my head for a while, right? This, this reading idea has always been in my head. Um, after we started doing that and I was feeling a little bit uneasy, unsteady with the MVC stuff, I said, you know what, why don't I do something like this for my project? Because basically I'm going to have to learn MVC and I'm going to have to learn how to use it um, in life, like to get a, a job. And also, you know, I don't have unlimited time, so I might as well make my 100 hours something where I'm using it constantly, right? So that was my thought process. And yeah, I think it's a pretty cool idea. I'm looking forward to it. I am a bookworm though. Like I would have used this as a kid. Like, I don't know if a lot of kids in my class would have, but I would have thought it was cool. Like, oh yeah, I'll share my drawing of whatever the story was, right? So I think it's, I think it's a cool idea, you know? And then maybe there's a button, maybe there's a button where kids can share their artwork, you know, to a family member. Probably not, not before June. <laughs> Anyway, so the login page I, I really haven't done anything with. I just I would prefer that the users could log in using their username instead of their email. The usernames are unique. If you go over here to is it models? No. Which is it? There's somewhere where you see. See, this is me getting to the hang of oh controllers. Yeah, if you go over to the authorization controllers, you'll see that they are making sure that, where is it? Is this it? Log out, get sign up. Here, uh, when they're trying to sign up, uh, make sure that you know an email address is valid. Um, but it also, I thought I had somewhere. Oh, here, find what? Is this it? Username. I think this was it. I think earlier today, less sleepy me figured out. Yeah, so here, account with that email address or username already exists. So they are checking here um, that that username isn't already in the database. So I just think it would be better to log in using a username than the email. For one thing, it takes a lot less time to type in a username. I prefer using usernames. Well, for some things. And you got to remember, it's probably going to be the kit signing in, right? So a kid can remember a username a lot easier than a whole email address, as far as I think. So anyway, I just have to find out the right way to do that with this um, local authorization strategy. I don't think it'll be very hard at all. But that's all I have for login right now. I don't know if I'm going to be doing the signups as two different pages as I have them right now. I am going to have to do something with the login. So this combining into one sign up is sounding better and better to me the more I talk. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, so they go to the page. Oh, and I forgot to say, I'm going to have a landing page, right? So you've never signed up, right? Like, what is read along? What is this amazing social media application? <laughs> uh, so this is, this is like the, the landing page. This is the, you know, like the the page, you've never signed up, you never, you know, you've just shown up. I want there to be, you know, the header. I want there to be a nice full screen splash image kind of slideshow, like showing like happy kids reading, happy kids showing off their work, happy teacher, right? Like a nice little slideshow, buttons that'll take you lower down the page. Below that splash screen, I want to have, you know, a happy smiling image on the left. And then I want to have, you know, some basic info about 
what read along is, and then a, two buttons, a button to like, are you a teacher? Are you a parent, right? To get you further down. A nice pretty like testimonial quote, something to break up the page. And then I was thinking a final call to action series or like section where it's like, sign up as a teacher, sign up as a parent, right? Like you've reached the bottom of the page. So that's basically the landing page right now. But they go to the landing page, they are wowed by the beautiful images. <laughs> they choose to either sign up or log in. As always, they can log in in the header, you know, just going to the hamburger menu. They don't have to scroll all the way down if they've already logged in. But once they're in, they're showing up on their profile.ejs, which is their dashboard view. And then it goes on from there, right? So from there, there's a link to being able to add a post, links to your classroom, links to your friends feed, or to your list of friends, links to your messages, links to your settings. Like, I need to, what I need to do tomorrow um, during my thinking time is I need to kind of like shrink the scope of this. I have a, a, a lot of experience, work experience with project management, not, um, you know, I have a, a, a little bit of experience now as a developer, right? Um, like on contract work and things like that. But um, project management is my background. <laughs> and I know that, uh, you know, scope creep is a very, very real thing. Um, like a very real thing that can happen. And I think that just because I'm by myself does not mean that it won't happen. In fact, it might mean that it, it could happen even more. Sorry, I just saw I forgot to put it, forgot to close this fan. Um, so I want to like tighten it up. I got to tighten the scope up a lot. You know, I need to like break it down to bare bones. What, what would make this app just work bare bones and then start working out from that. And I think I'm going to go at this kind of, cause I, I don't have much time you guys. Um, if someone in the chat wants to tell me, I forget how long we have until this is due, but I, I want to say we have like seven weeks until an MVC is due, maybe even less, maybe in six weeks. So I think I'm going to do like sprints of a few days and kind of try to go this at an agile way and like actually make tickets and all that just to keep myself motivated, but, uh, and on task and not get distracted, but we'll see you guys. I don't know. <laughs> I, I really don't know. Like it's a lot, you know, like getting all these views. I need to narrow down the scope before I really start coding too much because if I kind of get lost in the weeds, I might end up just making a bunch of views and not actually making the API even, right? Like I haven't even talked about the API. Like all of this has just been talking about views and that was just to get you signed in into the dashboard. And I still need to think about once you are signed in, all the things you can do. I need to think about the API. Like, okay, so what's it going to keep track of? Like, okay, we're going to need to keep track of books and each book I need to have, I'm going to have to link to like Google Books API or something like that, right? So there's a lot, there's a lot. And I might be a little nutty. <laughs> I might have lost my mind a little. Switching projects like this. June 1st is the MVP. Okay, so what? That today's May 5th. So that's not very long. That's like three weeks, four weeks, right? Three and a half weeks. That's not very long. So yeah, I need to shrink it down. Cause I did, I started on my other app, but I really do, I really do want to do this one. And I think it's important that I learn MVC. And I feel like my other one was kind of taking me away from what we're learning right now. So I feel good. Um, yeah, yikes is right. How are you doing on your project, Divaker? Please tell me you're farther ahead than I am. But don't tell me you're too far ahead cause then I'll feel bad. Tell me. Where are you in your project? Yeah. I mean, we just have, I have to get an MVP. I can do it. I can do it. I got to focus. I can do it. You know, I have a, a long and varied history of waiting until the last minute to do projects. I'm not waiting until the last minute. I'm waiting until the last month, but that's not the last minute. I will get this done. <gasps> you haven't even got an idea yet. Are you serious? Wow. Okay. So you're right around where I am. You're about yesterday <laughs> to where I am. Okay, yeah. Um, someone came up with a fun idea on Jennifer's stream today. She streams as old coder chick. Uh, 
what was it? Oh, it was a dating app where people put their least favorite and favorite chores and it, it matches you so that there'll be somewhere on someone in the house who likes to do the dishes matches with someone who doesn't like to do the dishes or like someone who likes to do the laundry with someone who doesn't like to do the laundry. Um, yeah, Devika, you should you should wake up tomorrow morning magically with a winning idea. I, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, that dating app, uh, I'm pretty sure that idea <laughs> is open to whoever wants to take it. Like we were just kind of fooling around on Jen's stream earlier, and that idea came up. And I thought it was kind of funny. And then another app idea that I actually I'm good at coming up with ideas. I'm not so good with the follow through, but another app idea. I was talking to Jesse. Um, and she is in our boot camp, is another moderator in our boot camp, who is actually kind of stepping away from the developer route. And she is heading more towards UX design, um, information architecture, all that kind of stuff. But anyway, I digress. Um, Jesse is very, very interested in chess at the moment and was trying to think of a 100 hours project idea a few weeks ago. I have no idea what they ended up picking, if they ended up picking this idea or not. But I was saying, it might be fun to come up with an app, an app, and granted, this exists, I'm sure it exists, um, that you could enter a chess game as far as the, you know, you know how they write it out, like they're like Q, H, 4, you know, right, like how they write it in their little code language, what goes where, and it would just basically be an app where you enter the game in text format, and it would make a visualization of the game, you could pause, you could step forward, you could step back, um, maybe you would preload some famous games in chess history, there you go. There's an app. And I don't actually think that app would be very hard to build, like, in the scheme of things. I think it would take time, but I don't think it would be that hard to build. So, Because you're not, you're not having people play a game of chess on there, right? If you're trying to, to build a, a, a chess app that actually played chess, that's a whole other business, right? Because then you got to think about the ways that the pieces move and the winning conditions. But no, you're just, you know, putting in games and visualizing them and fast-forwarding or winding or you know, watching a famous game from the past. So I'm pretty sure Lie Chess, Lee Chess does that already, but nobody said our, our project had to be unique. But that's a fun idea. I don't know. What are you interested in, in Diviker? Maybe I could give you an idea. I'm pretty good at ideas. I feel like we talked about this. Didn't we talk about ideas like a month and a half ago? Am I just, I thought we talked about ideas. And I think we decided that we didn't have any ideas at the time. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. My idea, my first idea, which I still like, but I just, I think this will help me in the long run a little bit more. Um, at least in the, it'll help me in the short run because it'll, it'll get MVC through my thick skull. Um, my original idea was a, and I'm still going to do it, a, um, an app that basically forces you to follow through on your study goals. So you would put in how often you want to like do something, like say do like five flashcards, and um, if you, it'll come up with a reminder on your on your phone or on your computer at those intervals. If you choose not to do the flashcards at that time, you would basically like lose either like funny money, right? Like you'd have a, like a play money account or eventually it'd be cool to have it like actually integrate with Stripe and like you actually lose real money and it gets sent to like either a charity or somebody you hate or something. But that, that was my original idea, which I still think is a fun idea. But I think this is a better um, project for me right now. Okay, yeah, you do remember that table. Okay, cool. I didn't make it up then. Yeah, I don't know. Do you have any ideas for your project? I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I don't really feel like working on mine right now. <laughs> so... I'd love to hear about yours. All right, well, while you're, while you're either telling me or not telling me about any ideas you have, let me think. So, yeah, I need to take care of the scope. That's the first thing. I should make a new file. Okay, so to-do list. Okay, number one, break down features to basic core MVP. And then make list of features in order I want to implement after that, right? So like 
I can make incremental improvements. And then I think what I need to do is I need to each, I need to make tickets. I need to write some tickets. I wrote down a list somewhere at the beginning of 100 devs. I should either find her or come up with new ideas. Yeah, you should. <laughs> yeah, I actually keep a draft email open in my email address of any random ideas that pop into my head because I can get to that draft email from my phone too. So I have some really random ideas, but this book thing has actually been sitting in there for months. Um, so write tasks, reduced tickets. work and profit. Okay, so this is my to-do list. <laughs> These are what my sprints are gonna look like. So I'm gonna break down the features to the basic core. That's not part of the sprint, that's just I need to do that first thing tomorrow. And then I'm gonna make a list of the features in the order I wanna implement them after that. I probably will make a, a small list of the features just to get them out of my brain, kind of do a brain dump, but I really don't think I need to prioritize them until later. Um, and then I'm going to write down my needs, break them into tasks, and then reduce them into small tickets, small and manageable tickets. I really do, I'm a person that um, does well with checkboxes and, uh, you know, like the reinforcement of you're doing a good job when you get to like rip down a poster or something. So I'm probably going to do that. And I'm going to work, 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 and then I will profit. <laughs> so that's my plan. That's my grand scheme. June 1st, that's 26 days from now. Oh my God, okay, that's less than four weeks. Okay, so it's, it's six weeks until the final project's due. That's where I was getting the six weeks in my head. Six weeks until the final, final project's due, but four weeks until an MVP. Yeah, an MVP is due. I almost said an MVC, I have MVC on the brain. <laughs> It's too many MVs, <laughs> but all right, I can do it. I can do it. Oh, I guess, okay, at its core, I guess I could start trying to break down the features now. I'm trying to stream until about 10, and then I should start winding down for the night. I don't want to stay on here too late, but um, okay. So maybe if I write, if I try to write like an elevator pitch, maybe that will help me find the core of my app. Um, I wish, here, let me open my email on my phone where I wrote down the idea in the first place. I don't want to open it <laughs> right on a, right in stream because God knows what's in my email. But let me open that, that, and, and I'll write down what, what I had in there. All right, project ideas. Okay, I said, which one is it? Um, okay. Um... Okay, that's actually funny. This exact, all right, so I have I have a few different ideas that I think I, I melded into, yeah, and then we get to the job hunt. That's right. <laughs> I have a few different ideas that I melded into this, so I'm just gonna write down all the ideas that were kind of, um, I kind of turned into this. Okay, so I have a visual, and remember, these aren't, these, these are related ideas, right? These aren't what I, this actually is, but I said, um, Visual bookshelf with search capabil capability or filtering capability will pull images and basic data from Google Books or other API. Oh, let me wrap that text. Sorry, just a second. Isn't it funny how they don't have a shortcut for that? Uh, other API and allows users to upload reviews, children's, this is basically it, children's artwork, project ideas, etc. right? That's, that's almost this, this app um, exactly. But then I have a couple other things on here. I have um, a summer reading tracker, which was a related idea. And then that's probably, yeah, that's probably it. So those are my two ideas that I've been kind of milling around in my brain for a few months that I turned into this. So a visual bookshelf with search capability or filter capability will pull images and basic data from Google Books. Okay, so 
All right, this app. So I do want it to be visual. Visual I think is really important. Visual, appealing, intuitive, right? I think that's really important. If it's something like, it can't just be Goodreads, right? It has to be a lot more visual, a lot more kid-friendly. I think that is at the core of this project. Um, it needs to be connect to Google Books or similar to get the visuals, right? Okay, allows users to upload. Yeah, allow users to upload. I'll just copy all this. Oops. Okay, and then, and then there's the social aspect that I added on top of that idea. Is that social aspect of having friends and stuff core to this? I think it is. I think it has to be, right? Because if, if we're making this as something just for children, if I'm aiming it just for children, because this original idea wasn't just for children. If I'm making this something just for children, they're not going to have the built-in social network that adults would have where, you know, you can find your friends. So I think that, yeah, you know, it can't just be a random feed. Like, you can't just let kids out. I wouldn't feel good letting kids out and just um, sharing a feed with some randos, right? Like, it has to be a very cultivated selection of actual friends. So I think that the social aspect, social closed classroom aspect is important. Okay. Okay, so at the very least, I think it has to be these things. It has to be visual, appealing, intuitive. It has to connect to the Google, Google Books API or similar. It has to allow users to upload reviews, children's artwork, project ideas, etc. And it has to be a social classroom aspect. So I think the first thing I need to do as I'm going to need to connect to the API. I'm going to have to make my own API that can pull things in from Google Books. And a search function is going to let me do that. I need to allow my API to add, allow users to add things connected to that book. It needs to be visual. And then the social. I think these four, these are the four keys to this app. And I'm going to have to obviously, obviously I'm going to have to, you know, kind of drill down into what exactly, what exactly this means, what exactly this looks like. Um, but this will give me a place to start tomorrow. So, which is cool, right? But anyway, <laughs> okay, I can do this. It is Wednesday the 5th. It is due on Tuesday, right? June 1st is a Tuesday, I'm assuming. There's 27 days, 26. Is it a Tuesday? Let me look. Either way, there's not that much time. I'm just, yeah. Okay, it's due on Tuesday, June 1st. I don't, I, our, our teacher has a history of pushing back deadlines, but I have a feeling that this time, tell me what you think, Devikar, but I have a feeling that this time he's actually serious about that deadline and that due date. I could be wrong, you know, he, he's a lot nicer than I am, <laughs> a lot more forgiving than I am, but I, I have a feeling that that deadline is a real deadline. I'm going to work under that assumption. I always work under that assumption. And then when he pushes the deadlines, I'm always like, oh, cool. <laughs> but if you work under the assumption that the due date really is a due date, then you're not going to set yourself up for a bad time. So I'm going to do that. Okay. I know I have I have made an app in the past that I wonder if I can find it. I have made an app in the past that um, that connected. Uh, what did I call it? It. Um, let me see if I can find it on my note. Okay. It it did connect to the Google Books API. So I have I have connected to the Google Books API before. Uh, I could definitely do that. Let's see. Let me see if I can find it. What's it, what's it called? Um, what's it called? Did I not host it? 
Maybe I never hosted it. How weird. I thought I hosted it. Well, anyway, it was a book. It, I, have, I have made connection to Google Books API before, and it was not difficult. So he's only available in June, so that's a time constraint that he can't change up. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like, I feel like the June 1st thing is you're either ready to be uh, taking up his time or you're not, right? Yeah. We'll see. I <laughs> Ask me again in 24 days. <laughs> I kind of hope he doesn't budget. I'm just saying. Like, I think that it's really great to be flexible and forgiving of people, but at the same time, there's going to be a lot of people who have prepared a lot better than I have with their time. And granted, April April was a doozy for me, but, you know, people have powered through and they're really, you know, they've been working under the assumption that it's due June 1st. And I think that they should be rewarded for doing their work by the due date. So I, I hope he does stick to it. We'll see. We'll see. It could go either way. It could go either way. I, I don't know. I hope so. I hope so. I'm going to assume so, because if he does extend it, he's going to extend it, like, <laughs> on May 31st, right? And even then, he would only extend it, you know, I don't see him extending it, because when would he extend it to? Like you said, he, he's only available in June. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think that, yeah, I don't think there's going to be an extension. I think it is what it is, and that'll be that. So, I need to do this. All right, so, tomorrow, I need to find... I guess I can make some little mini tickets for tomorrow. Um, I'll make a GitHub, and like a Kanban board or whatever. Um, but let me see. Okay, so okay for Thursday. Thursday to do. So first thing I need to do on Thursday is so first thing. Mm, well, okay, I'm I need to find my. Google Books API app, right? Because I already did a lot of the work there. If I can just look there, I can get a lot of the coding part done, just be done with it. Um, then I need to, I think tomorrow, tomorrow my focus needs to be focus on setting up the database and, you know, like, <laughs> code API, right? Like, if I could get all that done tomorrow, that would be... <laughs> That'd be some small miracle, but I think that's what I need to do tomorrow. Like that's got to be it. Got to get Google Books figured out, and I need to get my database figured out, set up, and just build out my CRUD API. And then I can always edit it later, right? But yeah, yeah. Devika, you need to pick an idea. Yeah, I think my idea could be overly ambitious for this time frame but again I can make the scope smaller make the scope smaller I can do it <laughs> yeah oh my gosh <laughs> this is the face of a person that realized that they have less than four weeks to do their final project mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can do it here's a fun thing I'm not even sure so in in MVC, in MVC, your API is kind of all over the place, right? Because of the routes. Okay, so tomorrow I'm going to be getting to know <laughs> MVC all the better. <laughs> Trying to build out my API. And to be fair, I'm kind of rebuilding my API, right? Because I have this one from our group project that I'm going to kind of tear down to the studs and rebuild. So it's not... <laughs> I'm not building it from scratch, which I have done before, not in an MVC format, but I have built CRUD APIs from scratch, but I'm going to be doing that. Yeah, see, like, post feed, I'm going to have to come up with my, I need to draw, like, a site map. Okay, I have a lot to do. The good news is a lot of these things are things that I can do away from the computer because I do have the t kids with me. Um, basically, I, they're out of the house from 8.30 until noon every day. And then the rest of the time they're with me. So uh, I don't like to be on the computer too much when they're home. So a lot of this is stuff I can just do on a notepad. You know, like I can, I can map things out on the notepad. I can 
uh, write up tickets on the notepad, right? Um, which is good news. You know, if I if I really make the most of my time and sneak in stuff like that, that way my computer time, like my actual time at the desk, sitting down at the desk. Who am I kidding? I'm sitting at the dining table. Although I did set up a desk this weekend in our garage, but it is a desk in our garage, but I do have a desk. Um, and it's even got a chair and it's even got a cooler right next to it. But anyway, so yeah, if I use my time wisely outside of computer time, when I do go down to, to sit down at the computer, I can just be like a coding machine. I can be like a hacker and just like, right? I can dream. It'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, the styling on this, like, I know I need to make it visually appealing because it's for kids and stuff, but like, it's going to be a little bit sparse. Like, yeah, I was thinking in my head that I could, I could kind of get to know Tailwind for this. Nah, it's going to be bootstrap probably. Like, it's just going to be bootstrap style. Like, you like it clean? Cool, because I'm going to use bootstrap, and that seems to be their only style. It's just clean and clinical. It's going to be what it's going to be. It'll be okay. And then, on top of all this, I have client work. I have three clients right now. Okay. Yeah. I have a lot of work. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> this stream isn't as fun as my Code War stream because I just have a lot. <laughs> it might be more fun to watch. I don't know. It could be less fun to watch or more fun to watch. I'm just realizing the amount of stuff I have to do. Plus, I have to be a mom <laughs> on top of all this. Like a stay, you know, like a, watching the kids at home mom on top of all this. Thankfully, I do have my husband here, but he works full time. So it is me. Okay. Oh, I have a lot. I have a lot. You are not going to see me just hanging out too much. If you see me hanging out on the Discord too much, say, get back to work. Uh, because those few little sneaky minutes I kind of pop in the Discord could be a few little sneaky minutes of writing tickets and planning and things like that. Yeah. Okay. I have a client. I think I can get my one client stuff done basically this, hopefully, end of this week like beginning of next week, and then I'll only have two clients to work worry about. One of them is really chill, and the other one, you know, it is what it is. I think I can do it. Awesome. <laughs> it is hectic. Like, I'm just realizing, like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's all right. Thanks for that. Thanks for saying reach out for help whenever. Thank you. I, uh, I'm very lucky in that I have a supportive husband who can help me as much as he can, and also it doesn't hurt that he's a he's a he's a coder as well. He's a, <laughs> JavaScript isn't his specialty. He's a Python guy, but um, worst case, if Stack Overflow can't tell me something about something, I can maybe ask him the right thing to Google. So even if he doesn't know the answer in JavaScript, he can at least tell me the right thing to ask, right? Like he, un <laughs> we've been together a long time, so he understands my wording a lot better than Google does. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, okay. Yeah, when I get off of here in a minute, I'm going to work on my client site a little bit, and then I think I'm going to go to bed because mornings are not my strong suit, and they are my, they are my work time. Like that is the time that I have like kind of with no other responsibilities and I need to be awake for it. So I need to go to bed. I need to get sleep. I think I'm going to start drinking tea in the morning. Um, I'm usually just a water person, but I need to snap out of that morning fog a lot earlier than I do now. So, okay, we could do this. We could do this. Divikar, you can do it. I can do it. We can do this. And whoever else is watching, we can totally do this. It'll be fine. All right, cool. Thanks for hanging out. I know this stream was uh, a bit funny because there wasn't really any coding. <laughs> it was just commenting and a lot of writing down, but this is the reality of where I am right now on this project. Um, it is what it is, you know? So yeah, <laughs> thanks for hanging out. I will be back on Tuesday for a Code War stream and I'll see you then. All right. Bye.